Hi, I'm Lawrence Furbish from the Rotary Club of Sanford Springvale in District 7780. Zone 32 Rotary Coordinator Carolyn Johnson asked if I could create a series of short videos on membership topics. My wife Barbara has an interest in animation and we thought it might be fun to use that to create these videos. So here I am and this will be my character in the videos. Better looking, huh? Although we collaborate on the concepts, scripts, and filming, it's Barbara who's the technical person who spends all the time in front of the computer creating them. We envision a series of short, two or three minute videos on various membership topics. They have a number of regular characters, and in fact, you may recognize some of them from your own Rotary experience. We hope they're entertaining, fun, and yet also thought-provoking. There's no question that membership is the most important challenge facing Rotary Clubs in North America. One of the videos will contain sobering statistics that should give you serious food for thought and maybe even scare you a little. Just because they're animations and aim for a light touch doesn't mean they're not important and that you shouldn't take them seriously. If you absorb the messages in the videos and, more importantly, take action and try to implement them, you will improve your own club's membership situation. Lastly, we love feedback, so send it along. If you like them, we'd love to hear it. And if you have suggestions, please let us know. Thanks for now, and stay tuned. You might wonder, given the title of this video, if this shouldn't be part of public image training. But if you think about it, how people view our clubs can make it easier or more difficult to attract new members. If someone said Rotary to one of your town citizens, would their first thought be a bunch of older men sitting around having lunch? If the answer is yes, you have some work to do. When Rotary International commissioned a survey, they found many people had never heard of Rotary. Since Rotary rolled out the People of Action campaign, it seems like more people have heard of us. But still, lots of people don't even know there's a Rotary Club in their town. What's the situation in your community? Is Rotary known for what you do or how you raise money? Is your club known for a signature service project or fundraising event? And if not, how can you remedy that situation? That same survey showed the reason most people join Rotary is to have a local impact. Can you find a way to leverage that by publicizing one of your projects and inviting non-Rotarians to join you? Most Rotary clubs have a website and a Facebook page, but where is yours directed? Is it mostly for your own members? How many pictures of your president or a member receiving an award and looking pleased with themselves do you really need? Promoting Rotary should be designed to pique the curiosity and interest of outsiders, and your website should be up to date rather than populated with information from last year. The People of Action campaign on Rotary.org can help you. Check it out. For some time, Rotary has encouraged us each to have an elevator speech ready for when we are asked what is Rotary. But maybe it's time to rethink what we say so that it reflects a more personal approach. So what's Rotary really like? We mostly get together to do service projects for our community, package food for the food bank, build playgrounds or walking trails. Some weeks we have speakers who come to keep us up to date on issues that affect our communities, like the opioid problem or climate change. And sometimes we just have a party. We're great friends. It really feels like a family. If we want to have people knocking on our door asking to join, or even to have a positive view of us when we invite them to a meeting or event, we have to polish up our image and make sure it reflects reality. 
Surveys of young professionals reveal that an important thing to them is that they don't have to explain rotary to other people. Next time we're going to look at some statistics and you'll see just how serious the membership issue really is. Spoiler alert! This video won't be as lighthearted as the others in this series. So why isn't Rotary growing? If we're so great, why isn't our worldwide membership increasing? Worldwide, in 2008, our membership was 1,231,483. And as of March 31, 2018, it's 1,231,833. That's an increase of only 350 members over 10 years. So what's going on? As you may have heard, North America is losing members. But Rotary is growing in other parts of the world, notably in Asia and Africa. Charts showing the 10-year trends in the US and Canada both show a steady decline. So let's look at this more locally. In 2016-17, in Zone 32, we had a net loss of 766 members. Only two districts out of our 20 had a gain at the end of the year. One was up 8 and the other up 38. By contrast, 13 districts lost over 25 members and 7 of them over 50. And this issue has been going on for some time. In 2009-10, Zone 32 had 36,735 Rotarians, while in 2017-18, we have 31,270, a decline of almost 5,500 Rotarians. Every year since 2009, our zone has had a net decline in members. Why these net losses? It's a revolving door. In 2016-17, Rotary Clubs in Zone 32 took in about 3,700 new members. But then we had over 4,000 members leave. We know some of these Rotarians passed away, transferred to a new job, or moved. But RI studies have shown 50% of new Rotarians leave within the first two years of their membership. We'll talk about how we might deal with that problem in a later episode of this series. Why is this happening? Well, for one thing, this year only 59% of Rotary Clubs in Zone 32 have membership goals. Maybe it's not impossible to grow without a goal, but doesn't having one make sense? And if we want to grow, wouldn't it help to know what areas we should concentrate on? Approximately 33% of Zone 32 Rotarians are female. About 3.5% of our district's Rotarians are under age 40. But 50% of Rotarians don't record their age, so how are we really to know what's going on? One of the things you can do is encourage every member of your club to update the demographics in their profile. Information is critical if we are to come up with realistic plans on how to increase membership. So why are we telling you all of this? Not to depress you or make you think the situation is impossible, but to encourage you to take the actions suggested here Roll up your sleeves and get to work. Rotarians believe anything is possible and that we can make a difference. So let's show everyone that it's true. Next time, we'll talk about what you get out of Rotary and how you can use that to interest prospective members. What do you get out of Rotary? Our Rotary International Director, Jeff Cataret, speaks of our members and prospective members as our customers. Think of joining Rotary as a commercial transaction. We ask people joining Rotary to contribute their time, energy, ideas, and money. When you buy something, it's because you need or want it. We need to make it very clear what our purchasers are getting when they buy us. I think for many of us, Rotary has changed our lives significantly. Think about that and see if you can convey it to prospective members. Rotary gives you the chance to meet people you never otherwise would have met. 
Rotary gives you the opportunity to do things you could not have done on your own. Rotary gives you a set of principles and values with which to live your life. Prospective members need to know that Rotary is an effective network of community leaders and membership gives them access to this valuable group. A Rotarian receives personal growth, fellowship, professional development and leadership training, continuing education, public speaking skills, family opportunities, unique travel experiences. And most importantly, we get the opportunity to serve our communities locally and those in need internationally. Through Rotary, you can make a difference. There are many ways we find new prospective members. Sometimes they come to us. Hi, I'm Holly. I'm here for your meeting. Sometimes they see something online about our activities and want to learn more. Sometimes a Rotarian from another club brings them to our attention. But when all is said and done, Membership growth comes down to one person asking another to consider changing their life forever by joining Rotary. Some people find this very easy to do, while others don't. Here are several things that might help. Make it a conversation rather than a direct and overt invitation. Concentrate on listening. What are the person's passions and interests? What do they care about? Can you see a way to make your club a good fit for them? Share how Rotary has changed your life, friendships, networking, professional growth, service to others, travel. Depending on what you learn about your prospective member, invite them to a service project, a meeting when you have a good speaker, a social event. We all want a new member to join right away, but take your time. Make sure they know what they're getting into and that it's a good fit for both them and the club. It doesn't help to get a new member and have them leave after six months. Remember the advice of Rotary membership nerd Christy Govertson. You don't propose on the first date. There's more to consider, so we're going to return to this important topic in the Ask Part 2. There's a lot of emphasis these days on attracting younger members. That's great. It's wonderful when you can look around your club meeting and see young faces. You may have to be a little flexible and adapt to new ways of thinking and doing things. For some of us, change is difficult, but in this day and age, it's an absolute necessity. Some young members may well have small children. How can you make your club inviting and comfortable for them? And I'm not just talking about an occasional Rotary family social event. I once met a young woman whose club let her bring her infant to meetings. And I know other Rotarians who involve their kids in club service activities. And don't forget about the recently retired. They often have the energy, time, financial resources, and skill set to be great members. A club with a diverse membership is a strong club. Finally, we're a service organization, and community and international service is important to us all. But remember fellowship. Surveys show the main reasons people stay in Rotary are friendship and contacts. 
So who asked you to consider joining Rotary? I'll bet you can remember, and I'm also guessing that you're very grateful that they did. Well, now is your chance to pay it forward to someone else. So think about what Rotary means to you and get out there and change someone else's life for the better by inviting them to get to know more about us and the wonderful world of Rotary. I'd venture a guess that each of our clubs believe that we are welcoming to potential new members and guests. But are we really? Maybe it's time to take a good close look at our behavior, just to be sure. First of all, nowadays when many clubs don't meet every week or at the same time or the same day or even the same place, is information about your meeting up to date and on your website and Facebook page. The Rotary Club meets downtown tonight at 5. I could do that. It isn't helpful to have a prospective member or visitor show up and find there's no meeting that day. When a visitor arrives, is there someone to greet them other than the person who takes their meal money? The lunch is 20 bucks! Isn't there a better way to greet a guest? Welcome to Rotary! Glad to have you with us! When we go to a meeting, it's only natural for us to want to catch up with our friends. But it's critical that someone has the job of greeting guests. Even better, work to get everyone in the club thinking about reaching out to a new face that walks in the door. Do some of the Rotarians in your club like to sit together at the same table every week? This seat is safe for Joe. Maybe they need to be encouraged to invite a guest to sit with them. Would you like to sit with us? As you know, we do our best to keep these videos short. While working on this one, we realized that there are many aspects of being a truly welcoming club. So next month in part two, we'll continue this important discussion. So here we are back again, talking about how important it is to be a truly welcoming club. Most clubs don't have formal agendas for their meeting, but perhaps a member could explain some of the less obvious aspects, such as the four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerns? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerns? at every meeting. And what about those frequently used Rotary acronyms? The DGE and the DGND will be at the Pre-Pets meeting next week, and be sure to get the DTA on your calendars. Happy dollars are great, but how would your sergeant's attempt at humor come across to a first-time visitor? My granddaughter just got accepted at Yale. Hey, that's great. Now we know at least someone in your family has some brains. And then there's fining. Some clubs love it, but how does it look to an outsider? Well, Tom, your picture was in the paper this week, so that'll be ten bucks. And for any of you losers that skipped last week's service project, that's going to cost you five bucks. Imagine a first-time visitor to Rotary chatting with their spouse that night. So how was your Rotary meeting? Wow, you wouldn't believe it. What was yours like? I don't know where to start. Maybe rather than assuming that everyone finds us to be a warm and friendly group, we might want to dig a little deeper. How about asking some of our visitors and guests what they think about us? But when all is said and done, the most important thing is that you make a real conscious effort to make a visitor feel welcome. Think about how you would treat a guest in your own home. If you want someone to return, they need to walk away feeling good about their experience. 
Next time, we'll talk about how to do a great new member induction. So you have a new member ready to join your club. Congratulations! Now, how are you going to induct the new member? And more importantly, how will it make that new member feel? First, we want to show you what not to do. I actually witnessed a club president do an induction this way. So today we have a new member joining us. Alex, come on up here. Here's your stuff, you know, pin, hat, t-shirt, donation form. Glad to have you with us. You can sit down now. I'm sure you have seen others that, while not this bad, were pretty awful. Think about how you would feel if you had been invited to join a new organization. Wouldn't you want to think that you were joining an organization that values you and is happy to have you? Make the induction personal. Start out by doing a little detective work. Identify family members and find out something about them. Invite them to attend if possible. Be sure the sponsor can be there. Find out about the person's occupation, where they work. Get some background on them, education, other places lived, hobbies, passions, other organizations, service work. Use this information to create a script that is specific and personal to them. Make the induction a significant part of the meeting. Today, we have the pleasure of welcoming our newest member, Alex, into our club. He is joined by his mom. Alex, we are so pleased to have you joining our Rotary Club. You will find the club can be a cheering section with things going well. You all may know that Alex works in tech support for Walker Systems, but you may not know that he is an avid hiker and loves camping in the outdoors. Alex, welcome to our club. You don't have to follow this word for word. Adapt it to the particular prospective member in your club. It might be very different for a young millennial compared to a retired businessman. The key is to make it special and memorable. That new member should leave the meeting feeling gratified and proud that they have joined a terrific organization that highly values them. Next time, we will tackle the important task of keeping new members once they have joined. In our last episode, we had a great induction ceremony for a new member. So what's the problem? The problem is new members join but don't stay. If you remember the second video in this series on statistics, we talked about Rotary suffering from the revolving door syndrome. The following statistics bear this out. According to Rotary International, in the 2018-19 Rotary year, approximately 80,000 new members joined Rotary. but 67,000 left, 52% within their first two years. Why is this happening? Our zone director, Jeff Cataret, says it's like selling new members a new Mercedes and then delivering a 1950s Chevy. Not a great customer satisfaction model, is it? How many of you know what your current members really think of their club? If your club is like most, there may be at least one member who likes to complain and tell the club president what's wrong, but there are probably several who sit around quietly keeping their views to themselves. What to do? Perhaps you should consider administering a Rotary Club health check. This short and easy to take survey was developed by Rotary International to help you diagnose problem areas in your club, prescribe remedies, and deal with issues before they become serious. You could have your officers or board of directors fill it out, or perhaps even better, ask every member. The health check is divided into five major areas, your club experience, service and socials, members, 
image, and business and operations. In each area, it asks a series of 10 to 15 questions. If the answers to the questions demonstrate a problem area, don't panic. The health check has a prognosis with prescriptions to improve the situation. If your members don't find club meetings relevant, interesting, and varied, there are strategies to help you change things up. You can copy and paste the health check questions onto SurveyMonkey or a similar electronic questionnaire to make analysis of the responses faster and easier. To be effective, you can't just ask members to fill out the health check and then forget it. You have to follow up. Rotary International has a number of excellent tools to help you. Here are just a few. We've talked before in this series about the Rotary Revolving Door Syndrome, which is new members leaving your club after only a short time. So what can you do about it? The most important action you can take is to quickly and effectively involve your new members in club activities. That doesn't mean putting them in charge of your club's major service project or some other task that no one else wants to do. Find out what they like, what they're interested in, what they're passionate about. Perhaps they love social media and would be happy on the club's public image committee. Maybe they care deeply for hands-on service and would fit in on the community service committee. If they're social and outgoing, ask them to suggest and organize some new club social activities. If they're interested in youth service, ask them to help with Interact, Rotaract, or RILA. Rotarians want to be busy and involved. That's why they joined. Don't leave them sitting around your meeting with nothing to do. It's also important to teach them more about Rotary. A new member orientation program is great if you can keep it fresh and fun. What about a district new member welcoming party? Perhaps have a rookie group of new members identify We've talked before in this series about the Rotary Revolving Door Syndrome, which is new members leaving your club after only a short time. So what can you do about it? The most important action you can take is to quickly and effectively involve your new members in club activities. That doesn't mean putting them in charge of your club's major service project or some other task that no one else wants to do. Find out what they like, what they're interested in, what they're passionate about. Perhaps they love social media and would be happy on the club's public image committee. Maybe they care deeply for hands-on service and would fit in on the community service committee. If they're social and outgoing, ask them to suggest and organize some new club social activities. If they're interested in youth service, ask them to help with Interact, Rotaract, or RILA. Rotarians want to be busy and involved. That's why they joined. Don't leave them sitting around your meeting with nothing to do. It's also important to teach them more about Rotary. A new member orientation program is great if you can keep it fresh and fun. What about a district new member welcoming party? Perhaps have a rookie group of new members identify and organize a new service project. Encourage new members to attend Rotary Leadership Institute and be sure your club pays for them. Invite them to come with you to the district training assembly, to visit another club, to help another club service project, or even to the district conference. Help them to get an account and sign on to your district website and rotary.org. There's lots of great information on these sites to help them learn more about Rotary and get excited about the possibilities open to them, such as action groups, fellowships, and friendship exchanges. Assigning a mentor to work with them is a great technique, but just be sure the mentor will take the role seriously and be a good personality fit with the new member. Get to know your new member. Be sure they give a classification talk soon after joining. 
Keep it informal and simple. Learning about a new member's occupation and personal background is a great way to encourage bonding, make them feel at home, and help current members welcome and include them in your club. I hope some of these hints and suggestions will help stop Rotary's revolving door. And it's critical because we do pretty well at bringing new members in, but not so good at keeping them. Here is a resource from RI that also might help. There are two types of members in Rotary, active and honorary. However, under Rotary's new rules, clubs have been given a lot of flexibility in defining membership types within their own club. This is key because it means that people who couldn't or were not interested in being traditional Rotarians can now be members of our clubs. Let's talk about a few examples. We'll start with a service member. This is someone who can't or doesn't want to attend meetings regularly, but wants to be a Rotarian and to actively participate in the club service projects. Remember, a volunteer activity is a Rotary meeting too. Rotarians are all about service to do good in the world. Someone bringing a desire for hands-on service is an asset and should be welcome to the club. Many clubs have begun offering a corporate membership. This approach allows a Rotary Club to involve a corporation, business, nonprofit, or other organization while different officers or employees attend the meetings and participate in club activities. This can be very effective when the head of the business or organization is interested in Rotary but can't commit the necessary time or who has several employees who want to be involved. The membership fee can be negotiated between the club and the business or organization. Some clubs are offering family memberships. This is very useful when both husband and wife want to be involved but have limited financial resources. It can also work in cases where a member's adult children are interested in joining in. This is a great way to introduce and involve family members who are too young to join Rotary but can participate and help with projects and events. The son of one of my club members has been an active participant in Rotary since the age of five, and he is now almost old enough to be inducted as a new member, something he's really excited about. A family membership would have allowed him to consider himself a member all along. This ended up being a bigger topic than we anticipated, so to keep each episode short, we've split it in half. We've covered service memberships, corporate memberships, and family memberships. Next time, we'll tackle young professionals, seasonal, and ambassadorial. Last month, we started a discussion of the new and innovative types of membership possible because of RI's increased flexibility. This is a way for you to attract new members to your club who probably would not have been able to become traditional members. We all talk about wanting more young professionals in our clubs, but how many of us have considered creating a special membership category to better accommodate the needs of this group of prospective members? This might mean special dues amounts or relaxed attendance requirements. Attendance minimums are no longer required by Rotary anyway. How about a seasonal membership? Many clubs in certain areas lose members in the winter months and see them return in the spring. Rather than members taking a leave of absence or quitting the club, seasonal membership offers a positive way for them to stay involved and connected to the club. But what about setting up an ambassadorial membership 
where the member attends meetings in their winter home and brings back good ideas from the club they have visited. I have a few fun project ideas from Florida that might work up here. How about a beast of an event, a wild game dinner, or a Bustin' Clay's shoot fundraiser and barbecue, or my favorite, an armadillo race. Interestingly, a club I know is in a tourist town, and many of the members are busy during the summer and can't participate in club activities. But in the fall, when the tourists depart, they become involved again. The key is to think about what works to meet the needs of our members and prospective members and how our flexibility can allow them to stay active and involved. Next time, we'll talk about the various new types of clubs specifically designed to help us grow our membership. Last month, we finished talking about different types of club memberships, and now let's turn our attention to different types of clubs. Research by RI has shown that one of the best ways to increase our overall membership is to charter new clubs. First, we could try to start a new traditional Rotary Club, usually made up of people looking for connections, service opportunities, and traditions. A frequently heard reason for not joining an existing club is, I can't make the meeting time. So if your community has a lunch club, why not try to start a breakfast club or an evening club? A great way to begin this process is to start a satellite club, which will have its own meetings, projects, bylaws, and board, but will still be connected to the sponsoring club. Once the satellite has grown sufficiently, it can be chartered and become a new club of its own. Another new type of club is the e-club, which meets only online. This is great for people who travel a lot, find it hard to make meetings, or who prefer the online experience. And it doesn't have to be geographically centered, so you could have members from all over the world. And then there is a passport club that promotes its members to participate in any clubs, fundraisers, or projects. Passport clubs have requirements for participation, but leave it up to each member to choose which service projects interest them the most. Looks like we've run out of time, but we still have four more types of clubs to cover, so you'll just have to wait until next month. Anticipation's good. See you then. Welcome back to our exploration of new and innovative types of Rotary Clubs. You could organize a corporate club made up of members from the same business or organization working together to do good in their community. Think of the staff of a large hospital or university who meet in the cafeteria on their lunch break. The plan for our tick-related disease prevention outreach program is almost done. People who are passionate about a particular issue could start a cause-based club. For example, individuals concerned about climate change and the environment could magnify their impact by working together to address that particular set of issues. And the causes are endless, and a great variety of clubs could emerge from this model. You might create a family club made up of several families with connections and a desire to improve their communities and the world. They might gather to meet on Sundays after church or in their homes on a rotating basis for a barbecue. Think of Paul Harris and his three colleagues. Finally, we could all work to start more Rotaract clubs, which by the way, can be community-based. RI has recently elevated the status of Rotaract clubs, and they're a great opportunity for younger people wanting to serve their communities, develop leadership skills, 
and have fun with service. So we've looked at eight types of clubs you might consider starting, but don't be constrained. Use your imagination and creativity, as I'm sure there are other great potential models out there. So if these last two episodes have inspired you to think about starting a new club, next time we'll talk about how to go about it. We spent our last two episodes describing different types of Rotary Clubs, so now let's tackle how to start a new club. First, you need to identify potential new club opportunities and decide what type of club you want to form and its location. Things to look for, for example, are areas of high population growth, communities with no club or where a club folded five or ten years ago, or a group of active people who might be interested in an e-club or passport club. Next, identify key stakeholders and get their buy-in. This means district executives and club leaders who might be affected by the change. A sponsoring club is not required, but highly recommended. Now it's time to find a champion and a mentor for this new club. The champion needs to be passionate committed, influential, and willing to take charge. The mentor or advisor needs to be knowledgeable, dedicated, but also flexible, letting the new club create its own culture. Mixers, informal socials, and informational meetings to attract potential new members should come next. Advertising them as widely as possible is great, but nothing beats a personal invitation. Now it's time for an organizational meeting, which can be part social, but should also get down to making decisions about the new club's purpose and how it will operate. It's a good time to focus on a service project to jumpstart the club. When you can charter the new club, make it a big deal. Invite members from every other club in the district and maybe even some zone leaders. Surrounding clubs can donate needed startup items. Sustaining the club will be critical. Focus on fun, networking, and involving members in service projects. Help them learn about Rotary opportunities outside the club. It's essential for the mentor advisor to stay involved, supporting the new club as it develops. And be sure to find out what the new members really want. A couple final cautions. Expect resistance and plan for it. Don't try to move too fast. Be flexible 